I'm Ryan Samansky, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the hierarchy on the ship. This may be a, a simple level question, certainly for those of you who are former military and many of you have been watching the channel uh, for a long time. But we've been getting a lot of questions lately about uh, you know, how, the, how the command structure on the ship works or, or questions that show a uh, lack of information or a lack of understanding about that. Uh, so I'm just going to throw this video out there and, and uh, hopefully people can reference it as they come up with those sorts of questions. So at the top of uh, the command hierarchy, on board the ship at least, may be an admiral. Admirals command entire fleets of ships, not specific ships. So, uh, for example, the Admiral can tell the fleet what to do, but he's not going to tell this ship's crew to go set this course or whatnot. He will have to tell the captain to do that, and then the captain will pass that on. Uh, I often, with my younger school groups, will use the analogy of a high school. Um, the admiral would be the superintendent. They're not always at your school. They're not going to come in and teach a class at your school, but they are the person that your principal reports to. Your principal, of course, is the ship's commanding officer. On a battleship, that is uh, just about always a captain. There are some times when, when uh, an XO or a lower rank might be the acting captain, but for our 19 commanding officers, uh, they, they all have the rank of captain. I could go on and on and on, mentioning those to whom I am grateful. But ladies and gentlemen, I am most grateful to my officers and crew. They are the finest, most dedicated, hardest working group of professionals I have ever served with. The captain is completely in charge of everything, but cannot uh, focus on all of the minutia. So he's got the executive officer under him. The executive officer uh, is a lot like the school's vice principal or disciplinarian. Uh, he is in charge of personnel. He takes care of all but the most major personnel issues and, and things like that. He is also in charge of the wardroom, the various officers of the ships. The officers are more or less like your teachers. Uh, they, they are the, the senior folks here. There is a hierarchy among the officers, not just based on their ranks, but also the ship is divided into divisions. So for example, there is a gunnery division. And much like schools will have um, a bunch of teachers who teach history, and then they will have a department chair or department head who's usually the senior teacher, there's a division officer. So the gunnery department has a division officer in charge of it. Oftentimes, the uh, executive officer holds the rank of commander, sometimes captain, right at the end of the ship's career. Uh, the division heads tend to hold the ranks of uh, commander, lieutenant commanders, sometimes down to lieutenant, depending on the, the size of the department. And some of the departments on the ship are relatively small. Also worth mentioning, the departments change over time, and they are not at all the same. Uh, if you look at the, the World War II departments on another Iowa-class battleship, uh, some of them will be the same. The G1 division, Gunnery 1, uh, is turret number one. That, that's the same throughout. One, two, three are the main battery. Four, port side five inch. Five, starboard side five inch. Uh, and, and then some other lower divisions based on the 40 millimeter batteries, the 20 millimeter batteries, etc. cetera. Uh, these are relatively the same, but some of the other uh, departmental breakups are completely different, even though, say, North Carolina, Alabama, New Jersey are all serving at the same time, or even Missouri and New Jersey serving in the Pacific at the same time don't have the same uh, divisions. A really cool place to flip through and find this out is the link in the description below, which has a list of cruise books. The cruise books tend to show the pictures of the crew by division. So if you've got more questions about hierarchy and who sort of fills each of these positions, you can look at these cruise books and see that, uh, all right, you've got a lieutenant who's in charge of this department, and then uh, he's got a chief petty officer with him, and then you've got all these enlisted guys, and it's all fire control technicians and electricians made, so something like that. Um, and then a couple of seamen at, at the very bottom who are training up. 
So this is a great place to look at that. And as you flip through one ship's cruise books over time, you'll see that those divisions and their breakups will change over time. Oftentimes, it also lists the responsibilities of each division. And we may go through this in a future video. Uh, let us know if you, if you like that idea in the comment section down below. So uh, you, you've got your division heads, the uh, gunnery division, and those tend to be broken out further into departments, uh, which are subdivided. Like uh, in engineering, engineering is everything. You got main propulsion, uh, you've got damage control, uh, so, so you've got all these separate uh, little departments that will also usually have an officer in charge. Sometimes it's a warrant officer and not a line officer. Uh, sometimes it is a uh, chief petty officer, especially as you get onto smaller ships. Battleships being large and having a lot of crew to manage tend to have uh, an officer chief enlisted uh, hierarchy. So. In your department, again, officers usually at the top, and that person is usually doing all the, the paperwork, a lot of the, the office type work. And then you'll have a chief petty officer below that. Sometimes you may even have a junior officer, uh, but not usually. It really has to be a big department to warrant multiple officers. Um, a chief petty officer or senior enlisted person Sometimes it's going to be a first class petty officer, um, especially on the smaller ships. Those guys are really in charge of the day to day of the uh, enlisted personnel. And they're, they're the technical experts. Oftentimes that chief has been in the Navy doing that job longer than that officer has. And many officers, especially line officers, are going to uh, be assigned different jobs navigating, gunnery, engineering uh, throughout their careers. So they will be a generalist by the time they get to the point where they take command of their own ship, but they won't necessarily be an expert on the thing that they're in charge of for that year or two year deployment. So that's where your chief petty officers come into case. And if an enlisted guy has a, has a question about an issue, takes it up the chain, and, and often that can go as high as to the chief petty officers, which is vitally important on a ship like this where you've got 18-year-old kids running 40-year-old technology, uh, oftentimes the chiefs are the only ones who have any first-hand experience with that. I'm sure your first and second classes have, have read the manuals and they might have worked on a similar system on a, on a previous deployment. But uh, it, it's important to have that chief as a technical expert. And they tend to not do the projects themselves because then they're not somewhere that everybody else in the department can find them to ask these questions of. Uh, and, and then it comes down to the, the regular enlisted guys, uh, your, your petty officers, first, second, and third class. Those guys have a rating. They have gone to school to learn a specific job, and uh, they, they're working their way up on that job. And then you will have below them uh, your seamen ratings, which uh, they, they've more just come out of uh, their, their uh, they've come out of boot camp. They might not even have uh, a rating yet. Uh, so, so they're still trying to figure out how this department works. And they may have been uh, separate into they're going to be a deck rating or a fireman rating, and they're working towards one of those. But they, they don't have either the experience or the training. Uh, so they provide the bodies doing the, uh, the work around the ship. Somebody needs to paint something, it's probably going to be your non-rates. And, and then if you've got to paint a lot, well, then maybe you're going to have your, your uh, deck division guys who work in that area also doing the painting. Um, and then likely, you're not going to see your chief out there swinging a paintbrush. Might get paint on his khakis. Because um, somebody has to be back at the office where everybody knows where they are so that when I'm painting on the starboard side of the ship, I'm like, is this supposed to be painted white or blue or gray? Or go back to chief and... Chief probably tells you to paint everything gray. That's the Navy. Haze gray and under white. So, uh, real simple, uh, high-level breakdown of what sort of hierarchy there is on the ship. Um, could certainly talk for a long time about this, and uh, I'm sure there are exceptions out there. If you're on a minesweeper, uh, you might only have one officer on board. There, there are certainly some commands that are held by chiefs or, or even... Uh, 
other senior enlisted guys, first classes or something. Um, so it might not be like this on all ships, especially smaller ones, but typically the battleships have large crews. What other kinds of videos about uh, sailor's life and, and hierarchy and that sort of stuff do you want to see? I'm kind of interested in doing one on uh, what the different departments on the ship did and maybe even how that changed over time. Um, let us know in the comment section down below if you like that or if you have some other ideas. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.